Okay, so first off, uh, we have an introduction to uh, droplet microfluidics. And what I will introduce you to is first the principle of droplet microfluidics, then the principle of water in oil droplets, a little bit of overview over droplet microfluidics, kind of advantages and disadvantages of this method, also fabrication and materials, uh, three basic mi microfluidic geometries, and finally some droplet generation methods. All right, so let's dive in. First off, the principle of droplet microfluidics. Well, if you kind of go on Wikipedia, it will say this, uh, uh, that um, basically droplet microfluidics is to manipulate discrete volumes of fluids in immiscible phases. And this might be a little bit confusing, but what it just basically means, it's working with emulsions. That's what droplet microfluidics is. But what are emulsions? Well, emulsion is uh, two or more fluids that are immiscible. That means two or more fluids that don't mix. So a very good example is if you have oil uh, and you have water, and let's say you shake it a little bit, uh, and then you get these kinds of uh, water in oil droplets, different sizes. Okay, so now a little bit more of on emulsions. Well, you actually have emulsions uh, in everyday life, and commonly this includes like mayonnaise or some lotion or ice cream that we know. But uh, how are they actually stable? Uh, these uh, emulsions. Well, they are stable because you can add what is called an emulsifier. So uh, now these uh, are basically molecules that contain two opposing ends. So yeah, it's two ends. One end is soluble in water and the second one is soluble in oil or basically fat. So we can look over here this is the emulsifier so it has a, a hydrophobic oil fat end and hydrophilic water head and this means that uh, let's say we have some mayonnaise here so it doesn't look that great because right now you have the oil here at the top and you have some vinegar and lemon juice which are water-based down in the bottom and they are not mixing, but then you add actually some egg yolk and that will act as an emulsifier. And then you will get what you kind of commonly uh, get in supermarkets or you make your own uh, kind of this nice mayo. All right, but now let's look a little bit more on kind of general phases in droplet microfluidics. So you have what is called a continuous phase, and that is actually what the medium that droplets flow in. And then you have what is called a dispersed phase, and that is the droplet phase. Um, and as an illustration here, this means that dispersed phase is, uh, is coming from here because this is the droplets while the continuous phase droplets that they flow in are coming from, from the side here. So they flow in, in this, so that is the continuous phase. And if you look at water in oil droplets, this means that the continuous phase is then the oil. And also the surfactant, or if you remember surfactant as emulsifier is also there to keep the droplets stable. And then you have the dispersed phase, which is then the water in water in all droplets. What are they actually used for? Well, they can act as small you know, test tubes. So basically each droplet contains whatever you need, whether that's uh, some kind of reagent or some kind of biological material. 
And this means that the droplets are actually excellent for high throughput, both biological or chemical experiments or even diagnostics. So if we take, have our little video here. So the water phase is the green dye here. And if you pull it out into the oil here, you will see nice forming droplets, nice and simple. So as I explained, so you could take each of these droplets here. So we have this uh, zoom and they would, each one would then be one test tube. So if you have a couple of hundred droplets, then you have take a couple of hundred test tubes. All right, but let's now look at the overview of uh, droplet microfluidics. So in general speaking, you always kind of have three different uh, things that are included. And that is the actual droplet generation. And this can be, let's say, for example, here we have a chip and we have uh, water and oil that we do uh, make droplets with. But you then also have to have some kind of storage. And that can be, let's say, a well plate. That can be a tube. Whatever you want to store your droplets in. And finally, you also need some form of analysis. You can have your droplets as a monolayer, for example, image. Or you can have another chip that you put your droplets through and analyze it this way have many different uh, options. But there is both uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, droplets. Now you mostly you have excellent volume control. You also have chemical separation. Um, you can uh, you have the ability to implement packed uh, bed microreators. You can store the droplets. Um, it is very high throughput and you can do many things in parallel. Uh, a very uh, good thing is uh, that it's very diverse application and we will come back to that later in another uh, topic. But of course there are also some disadvantages and creating droplets it can be technically uh, quite challenging also to kind of get them mono dispersed if you want that also to find uh, a proper generation rate stabilize your droplets um, and also the minimum volume um, of the droplets but let's then now look at materials and the most common material uh, is PDMS and it also, again, it has some advantages and disadvantages. Advantages, it's quite, quite cheap. It's really elastic. Um, it's easy to make prototypes. Uh, it's gas permeable and also non-toxic. Um, but the disadvantage is that it's organic um, incompatibility. Um, there's like small molecular absorption, uh, high tolerance, uh, high pressure intolerance. And uh, probably like if you want to commercialize things, it's this is very important that it's not really suitable for mass production. But then there's also uh, you can use glass and silicon. Uh, and again, they have slightly different advantages and disadvantages. Mostly if you want to commercialize things, then this is a uh, very good to use uh, glass uh, or silicon. However, then you have the major disadvantage that uh, it's quite expensive. So you have to choose kind of what you want. And we also have uh, three sort of common geometries that are used in microfluidic chips. Uh, first one is what we call a T 
junction, and that is because it looks like a T. Um, it's the most commonly used, uh, quite also the simplest uh, way, way, but it can be sometimes hard to uh, to manipulate the flow rate so you get nice uh, uniform droplets. Next one you see is uh, flow focusing. Um, it's easier to create smaller um, droplets this way, a little bit more complex than T-junction. And finally, you have the most complex one uh, is called the co-flowing. And here, the, both uh, all the phases come from the uh, same site. Um, but if you want to manipulate droplets or um, kind of do things uh, after you generate with them, uh, co-flowing might be the best option for you. So finally, um, droplet generation methods. Well, you have these different uh, ways you can generate. You can have a passive generation and you can have a active generation. And I'll just first uh, say a little bit about active generation, where you can use different forces. It can be acoustic, electrical, magnetic. Um, and then you use that to actually direct the cells or particles to the droplet producing region. So that is why it's called active. Um, but for here, we will mainly focus on the passive generation. And that is that uh, you have some kind of external pressure and this can be a syringe or it can be some kind of pressure pumps. And they are then used to uh, um, kind of make the cells uh, arrive at the droplet formation region. But the main thing is that it happens randomly. Uh, and we will get back to why that is important later on. Okay, I think that's about it. So just to summarize what we went through, we went through principle of droplet microfluidics, then also water in all droplets, what are they used for? Then we kind of had the overview of three major things that are usually included in making droplets, the advantages and disadvantages, then the different fabrication materials like the EMS, glass, then the different uh, geometries, the T-junction, the flow focusing, co-flow, and finally the droplet generation methods that you have a passive form and you have an active form. All right, thank you for listening.